Hi everybody and welcome to day four of the Daily Ghetto Vlog. I can't believe we're over halfway already. I need to get my act together because there's still a lot to do. But I'm really happy with where we are at. What we did on yesterday's vlog in getting these 360 games put in this centre console. I think it looks great and a sure sign of that is when you walk in the room and you smile at it. And every time I walk in and see this, I smile at it. And that's what it's all about, right? Making sure that you're 100% happy with things. So that's why you can't rush these kind of uh, movements in a game room because you don't want to rush ahead and then regret it and then subsequently take more time to fix it. But yeah, really happy with that. Uh, we've got to be cracking on. It's a very busy day. I have actually got a four hour tattoo session booked in. Uh, so I woke up ridiculously early. I think I've beat the birds up this morning. I can't hear any singing. Um, so yeah, we're going to get some work done before I have to go and get myself tatted up. Uh, what I did want to say though is that I'm sure uh, just a couple of videos ago now, I got some CEX tattoo uh, like transfers. A couple of people told me to put them on. I tell you what, if this video can get 500 likes, I'll put a CEX tattoo on my neck, right? I'm just going to put it out there now. So get liking if you want to see me <laughs> sporting a CEX tattoo on my neck for at least one video's duration, right? But uh, obviously we'll get into the tattoo later on. I'll be taking you guys with me and showing you the progress on my full back piece. But like I say, before that, there's a lot to be getting on with. There's a reason why I set my alarm for 5 o'clock this morning. First job that I want to do is make way for the Wii U games. I want the Wii U games to run at the entire stretch at the top of the shelf. I think that'll look fantastic. Obviously, we love the Super Nintendo wall. Uh, and I just think having that nice blue glow underneath it all the way across, I think that'll look brilliant. And now we've moved to 360 games. That allows us to sort of push everything down. PlayStation 2, I think, will ultimately go on this opposing side. So this side here, um, that you're only going to sort of see when you're coming into this back part of the room or when you're coming from the gym area, is where I'm going to house the obvious stuff, shall we say. So like PlayStation 2, the spines aren't pretty. VHS will probably end up here and a few other things that I don't need to be on immediate display. Having said that, it's still going to look good, right? It's, it's going to be in the 3.0. It's got to be of a certain standard. But PS2 will probably get moved into this area here um, and as I say that's what's ultimately going to allow us to move we you from down here because we've got to start emptying these units right if we're ever going to get to this Sega wall this has got to be emptied so yeah I'm going to make a, a strong tea and we're going to get going okay so I've got the first shelf in I decided to go with VHS first simply because they are slightly bigger than the DVD size case i.e. a PS2 game uh, and as we've already looked at in these vlogs, these top pieces are quite an awkward um, height. So it's given me this um, small shelf here, which I'm sure we can find something to go in there. Uh, there's a few double stacked VHS because I refuse to have more than one shelf of VHS. And I like to keep this gap here next to Pulp Fiction for my boy Marcellus Wallace. I'll do this a bit neater off camera, but there he is. There's his order from the coffee shop. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much that shelf done. Like I say, I, I refuse to go more than one shelf in terms of VHS. Only select few movies make it. So if I buy a VHS, one has to come out, one goes in. And that's kind of how I limit my VHS collecting. But now uh, that's in place, I'm going to start having some ideas about this small gap here. But we're now going to get all the PS2 taken off the wall and uh, put in place here. Okay, so the first shelf of PS2 has been transferred and I think it's looking real good. So I've just gone with the bigger box uh, stuff there and sleeve covers. Yeah, first of what will be probably three or four PS2 shells. And if we go up from VHS, I repositioned Marcellus Wallace. And I figured out that these v uh, cassette tapes fit perfectly. So I've been collecting like cassettes loosely as I'm going to come across them at car boots and charity shops and stuff. And yeah, they fit in that gap. Absolute perfect. So yeah, it's a real nice start to what is I've just whacked my head on that <laughs> Cheers chief. Uh, it's a nice start to what is ultimately the blind side uh, of this unit, right? So put in the lesser The items that I don't really want to look at but equally it's still really nice stuff or it won't be in the room But yeah, uh, we're gonna fill the bottom up now with ps2 and I think this has worked out really well We've even got my little Lego arm here, which uh 
growing very slowly. Okay, so that's PS2 in, it's way longer than it should have, and at some point they're all going to have to come out anyway, because I need to do the trunking hack, and the same applies for Xbox 360, but right now I'm just happy to have them in situ. Um, man, they're ugly games, aren't they? PAL PS2 games are so ugly. I'm glad to have them there. <laughs> out, of sight, out of mind, I'd rather look at these nice green cases here. Um, but right, okay, so now PS2 has been moved, it's time, finally on day four to take a look at this wall. Um, I'm gonna move PS3 down, just drop it down. Um, Mega Drive obviously needs to come out anyway. And then I'm gonna run Wii U all the way across. Um, it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, just have that nice continuous blue hue uh, running across. So yeah man, let's get that done. Okay, so I've rearranged the shelf somewhat so that we've now got this continuous stretch of shelving in line all with the trunking hack ready for the Wii U titles. Uh, I've been taking my time doing this, drinking my tea, watching my boy Theo at Slimehouse TV. If you're not already, go check him out. Link will be in the description. But yeah, it's finally time after, what? I don't know, many, many hours of talking about it to move the Wii U collection, start emptying these shelves. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. in um, yeah looks great like I thought it would the uniformity of that blue I mean I just love the blue boxes yeah the Wii U had its detractors but I don't think many people would detract against how nice it looks breaking up the shelves that blue uh, everything else is pretty much going to move now um, it's gonna have that knock-on effect of almost rehoming everything switch will be moving because I think switch is the obvious replacement for this Mega Drive stuff because obviously if this Mega Drive stuff ends up on the Mega Drive wall we're going to need something here shorter than a DVD size case so Switch will hopefully run across here and that should allow us to keep PlayStation 1 on the top there but yeah man uh, really happy to finally I've got that there the shelves are starting to look bare my uh, fantastic DIY look on the uh, <laughs> on the shelves if you can't see it who cares right um, but yeah all good uh, what I want to do now is sit down and open this parcel right okay let's open this package I've sat like a junior school child with my legs crossed because of the amount of stuff which is just everywhere in this room right now uh, I've got to fly and get to this tattoo session very soon uh, but I wanted to open this this was sent to me by someone I refer to a lot on this channel as my Polish pal uh, he does a lot of game hunting he's always out in CEX and charity shops and He'll often find things um, and message me and say, you know, do you need this? So he's very much an enabler. Um, but yeah, he always sends me some really good stuff. It's much appreciated him being out on the prowl for me. Uh, and there's a few bits in here. Uh, I, I always get to that point where I forget what we've sort of got waiting for me because it's over like the course of a month or two. And then it's kind of like a nice surprise when it eventually turns up, right? So uh, let's get into it. There's a nice little bag here. Let's see what is in here today so right okay so the first thing uh this is something he sent to me i think this triggered his sort of ocd uh more so than anything when i was talking about getting all white uh, consoles for my calax unit 
and he noticed that as part of my silver PlayStation 2, I'm currently rocking like a standard black memory card, and it has caught my eye a couple of times, I've got to be honest. So uh, he wanted to send me a silver memory card, so that's much appreciated. That's going to help to uh, keep the uniformity of the Calax unit. The next thing he sent me is, this was, I remember now, um, so when I first bought Street Fighter 6, not long after its launch, um, he messaged me and said he had a couple of these really nice sort of lenticular sleeve covers. He knows I'm a big sleeve cover guy. And then when it came down to it, I kind of messaged him and said, look, don't bother sending it to me because uh, I've sold the game on. But like him, I'm going to pick this up again when the price comes down. I didn't love it to the point where I was going to play it ahead of loads of other games that were in my backlog. And it got to that point where you know, I might as well cash in on it. I got like 32 pound trading for it, I think. I had my little sort of test with it. Um, I saw enough, I will dip back into it, but once the price comes down significantly. So I'm gonna keep a hold of this nice lenticular cover and this will get added to my collection. Once it's about 10 or 15 pound, you know, a year or so from now. And uh, my Polish pal is a hip hop fan and he's often hunted for hip hop himself in charity shops. Um, and there's a couple of things here. It's, he offered to me and uh, I'm very very happy with these because both of these are like on my hit list in terms of what I want for my own CD collection the first one I mentioned ages ago on a vlog as being my favorite Kanye album maybe on a par with the first one graduation but that is my beautiful twisted dark fantasy I always forget exactly what it's called my beautiful dark twisted fantasy some absolute bangers on here uh, massive fan of this album. It's been too long since I've played this album through. I've not owned it for a long time, so very, very happy to have this. This is going to be accompanying me uh, on my like hour and a half drive to and from my tattoo session. So massive shout out to you, my friend. This is going to help me with that journey. And this one, man, this is just memories for me, straight nostalgia. NWA Legacy Volume Two. Back in the day, like where I collect video games now, I used to collect hip hop CDs. I had like I don't know. A lot probably hitting on towards 500 maybe and I remember paying something ridiculous like 22 pound for this and we're talking a long time ago right like 20 years or so ago it was a lot of money this was like an imported CD back in the day from HMV NWA Legacy Volume 2 and I remember tunes on here like Chin Check if you don't know Get to Know Hello so it's like um, a reimagining of NWA so you sort of like in place of EZ you've got Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg and of course sort of Dr. Dre uh, DJ Yeller and MC Ren, but yeah, uh, two fantastic CDs that I would have loved to have found in charity shops, but never had the privilege of doing so. So, got to give a massive shout out to my Polish pal on this one. As I say, these are definitely going to help me driving to my tattoo session and the arduous journey of driving back because yeah, having a tattoo always takes it out of me, and that sort of like hour and hour and a half journey on the way home is never a pleasant one. So, this will be much appreciated. Let's get to it, man. I need to get some sugar in me and then I'm gone. Okay, so I've made it to the other side of Nottingham uh, for my tattoo session. There's a couple of charity shops here, so I always check them first. Um, I try and film what I can, but obviously it's difficult whilst you're getting tattered up and they're very stringent on health and safety as you'd expect. So uh, it's not always the easiest to sort of just whip my phone out and that kind of thing, but um, hopefully I'll be able to show you guys the progress um, in terms of my back piece. For those that saw the vlog a couple of months back, I've started doing like a full Medusa back piece, uh, continuing on my Greek mythology and uh, Nordic mythology theme, uh, which I've got running throughout my arms and chest. So yeah, I'm excited to see how much we get done. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at a couple of charity shops first. Oh brilliant, I collect all video games, so oh. yeah, anything like Xbox, Nintendo, PlayStation. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh there's a few here, brilliant, thank you though. I'll take a look then and see what I need. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, thank you. And that's why you always ask. I originally asked the elderly lady that was working there, um, have you got any video games? And she said, oh, they like DVDs. No, just what's there. And then 
I kind of explained, you know, like Xbox, Nintendo, PlayStation, and the woman upstairs, I heard her say Xbox, and I said, yeah, that's it. And she was off there for a while, and then she came back with the stack of 360 games that you saw. Um, I picked up three, they're only a pound each. There was another one which I was gonna buy, Naruto Shippenden 3, um, which I think is like three pound value or something like that, but it had no disc in it, unfortunately. But what I did pick up, say for a pound each, is Castlevania Lords of Shadow. I think this is one I've actually been after. I do have one on Steelbook. I think it's Lords of Shadow 2. I've heard good things about these games and yeah, I've been wanting to try them for quite some time. So I've never really done a 3D um, Castlevania game. So hopefully this is the one that I needed. So yeah, for a pound, that's decent. Uh, Dragon Age 2, not entirely sure if I own it. I might have like a slipcover version of this. If I do, I'll just do it as a giveaway. And Final Fantasy 13, again, it's one I'm pretty sure I don't own and for a pound. You know, you might as well pick them up. But yeah, proof you can find video games anywhere and everywhere, right? I'm in a very small little village. Come to get a tattoo, but always pop in every charity shop you see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get some food down me now and then go and get a needle stuck in me for the best part of four hours. Retro Ghetto. Okay, I'm back in the 3.0 after almost four hours of total tattooing time and I'm really happy with the results. Um, I did get my artist to take a couple of pictures for you guys about 30, 40 minutes before we'd finished, so that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, like I say, really happy with it, but there's probably a couple more sessions before the full back is completed and then we we'll move on to the next section because, yeah, I've got a lot of plans for uh, ink on this old man's body. But as predicted, I am wiped out, man. Um, four hours of tattooing, three hours of driving. I knew when I'd planned to do these um, daily vlogs for this week, I kind of knew this day would be the difficult one. I knew that um, being at the house for so many hours and how much having a tattoo wipes you out, that it was going to be difficult, which is why I woke up at five o'clock this morning to get as much done um, as we've already done in this room today. But, you know, guys, the grind don't stop. So we're going to have to do a bit more because the days are ticking by, right? And uh, there's still loads to do. So we're going to try and get some more done this evening before I inevitably um, have to edit this vlog, eat some food and get some well-earned sleep, I think. But before we get into that, uh, I've checked and I did really well with these games that we found at that charity shop. So... Um, Castlevania Lords of Shadow, I was right, I own the second one, where is it now? I'm sure I got it out to show you. Anyway, um, I own the second one, I got a really nice steel book for it, um, but I don't own the first one. And I remember once I went to play it and I thought, oh, I don't really want to start with number two. So yeah, really happy with that, that's a game I actually wanted to find, so that's great. Uh, Dragon Age 2, I own Dragon Age Origins with the sleeve cover, not Dragon Age 2. And I don't own Final Fantasy 13, I don't think. No, so for three pound, three games going in the collection on the newly built 360 area. Uh, speaking of the 360 area, that's where I'm going to kick off now. Uh, we're going to get all the collector's editions and things like that housed. And uh, yeah, it's as good a place to start as any. So this is the Lords of Shadow 2 steelbook that I was talking about. Really nice piece. And whilst I'm down here doing the um, sort of sleeve cover 360 games, I've just... Been reminded by how cool some of them are. I love this Paul of Juarez, the cartel one. That's so cool, right? It's like a magnet there, which locks that in place. Love that. Uh, this Red Dead one. Dante's Inferno. There's so many, right? Yeah, it's just nice to get them out and have a look at them every now and again because, you know, sometimes games just go on the shelf and, yeah, it's just nice to reacquaint yourself with some of these awesome additions every now and again. So even with this newly created... 360 unit here of putting all those games across the bottom so it looks awesome it's nice and full there's still these to get in there's still these to get in and obviously we need to create space for future editions so whilst it looks great i can't give myself a pat on the back just yet because i need to find a solution that's going to give me more space right future proof the 360 collection but uh, for now, that'll do. We move on to something else. Coming back to my space issue for 360, one of the things I could do is run games in the back there so I could have them on a higher level and then you would effectively see uh, more games behind the current 360 games. The difficulty then is it'd be hard to access them. Also, it's not going to future-proof me for long, right? Especially with 
all of those still sat there. Um, what I am thinking, um, which could be a better solution and something I'm going to try now, is these units. I think I mentioned on a previous vlog that potentially these units could sit um, here. Another option to go against this and then effectively I could house those units with more games so it'd be sort of games not only on each side but on the third side i.e the front as well but I do enjoy this here but it's an option that I need to try at some point and I guess now's as good a time as any to trial it. Okay so with the unit off the wall this heavy chest of drawers that I'm tired of moving to be honest uh, we now have the space here to test the theory of these units. Let's position it. As you can see, it's slightly overhangs, but it's minimal. Um, probably roughly a centimeter on each side, but like I say, not really anything that would worry me. Potential. Right, move the chair out of the way. I don't think we'll really get a better understanding until I take a few more off. I really didn't intend to be doing this much work. But let's do it. Okay, that's another one off. And you know what? There's some real potential in this idea. Um, I've now got the option to go as high as I want. This protrudes less than the chest of drawers and it's more open so I can display games. In terms of what I'll lose in the drawer option, we could look at doing that drawer hack that we saw earlier in the week at Ikea, because I still have enough space on the rear side to be able to put a drawer at the bottom of that billy. There's definite potential here, um, but this is something that we're gonna explore more on tomorrow's vlog, because my Chinese has just arrived, and I want nothing more right now than to eat big, get this vlog edited, get some sleep, and tomorrow is a big one. Not only is it day five of five, but of all the five days, tomorrow is the one where there's no interruptions. I've got no prior commitments, uh, I've got no jobs, no chores, no tattoos, no grass to cut, nothing. I'm gonna get up early and we're gonna get on it. Um, there's loads to be doing. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a big day tomorrow, so do not miss tomorrow's vlog. Day five of five. Um, and remember, hit that like button if you want to see me sporting a CEX tattoo. 500 likes and I'll get it rocking for you guys. But yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this vlog, please consider subscribing. Um, I'm going to go and eat, sleep. I'll see you all tomorrow. Appreciate you all watching in a bit. Retro Ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> Lock into the Retro Ghetto. Oh.